What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Action 6 Transport. A somewhat obscure ship, but it actually appears in Episode 2, and has a really detailed EU backstory and stats. It comes from the Action series of bulk transports produced by Corellian Engineering Corporation, who produced most of the haulers you see across the galaxy. There are the Action 2, 4, 5, 6, and 12, which are all similar in appearance and function, but made subtle improvements from the time raging before the Clone Wars to post-Empire. The Action 4 was 945,000 credits, and the price didn't get any cheaper, with a modified A6 called the Wild Card going for 3.78 million. For reference, that is ridiculously expensive, the cost of nearly 38 YT-1300s, or about 1 16th the cost of the Venator. Of course, that was the modified version, but given the price of its simpler predecessor, it has to be at least around a million credits. The wild card was used by the smuggler Talon Card, and though there were a lot of quality upgrades, I don't think it was 3.5 million credits worth, so it must have already had a really high base price. Keep in mind the GR-75 cost 350k brand new, without weapons, and was about 20 meters shorter, so that's just more evidence to think that the price was more around a million. And I think it's justified when you look at the incredible cargo capacity. The Millennium Falcon could haul 100 tons, the GR-75, 19,000 tons, but the Action-6 hauls an incredible 80,000 tons. That's four times more than the Venator, which of course wasn't intended as a cargo hauler, but these comparisons really show why the Action-6 could charge that price. Of course, we need to know how many dewbacks it could carry. That cargo capacity equals the weight of 98,160 of these Tatooinean lizards, and is one of the few ships that could actually haul the weight of a Zillow Beast. Its shielding was also quite impressive, with a 220 SBD rating, which was about half that of the similarly sized but military-made DB-20. But what was really impressive was the hull. At a 152 RU rating, it was nearly tied with the DP-20, which of course was expected to be receiving turbolaser fire and torpedo attacks from starfighters. That was really the two main selling points of this thing, carry more than four times a GR-75, and be as protected as a Corellian frigate. Its top atmospheric speed was average for this class, being 650 km per hour, or 404 miles per hour. And for galactic scale trade, of course it needed a hyperdrive, being equipped with a class 3, which is also average for a transport. It would require a crew of 8, and carried no passengers, while also having no armament. As for its history, the Empire bought up a decent amount of these, though a few of them ended up being stolen by rebels and pirates. I would assume that they were stolen from spaceports when they were empty and not heavily guarded, or when they were just hauling around something like building materials, because I think 80 tons of weaponry and explosives would have had the rebels looking a lot more powerful than we see them. But we know that one of them was successfully pirated by a gang from Corellia. Talon Card would take ownership of it when he split off to form his own band of smugglers, making a nice pun by naming it Wild Card. I mentioned some of the upgrades earlier, but here's the total. He upped the atmospheric speed to 950 km per hour, went from a 3 to class 1 hyperdrive, got warship shielding, concealed additional armored plates, 3 turbo lasers, added a computer control area and improved the living quarters, while only sacrificing 30,000 tons of cargo capacity. This may have been due to the fact that the turbo lasers were retracted, and he added a repulsor vehicle and starfighter stored inside of the wild card. Some of this cargo space was also split up into a medical bay, then an area that contained a fleet of droids including astromechs and gonks, while also installing a life support area that held a pack of pet fornskers. That area could actually conceal life forms from scanners. Other rare tech was a cloaking system that could keep the whole ship off of most scanners, while a stolen holonet transceiver gave him a backdoor into many holo sites, so that he could hack accounts and steal information, all providing the credits needed to run the ship and keep the pirate gang happy. And then there was this really exotic piece of tech that could extend out a beam of oxygen towards someone floating out in space, perfect for taking hostages after you blow apart someone's ship. All these upgrades did result in an extension of the overall length, bringing it up to 125 meters or 410 feet, which is nearly three times the length of the Millennium Falcon. At a height of 32.9 meters or 108 feet, it was about four times the height of the Falcon, or one and a half AT-ATs. And being 28.6 meters or 94 feet wide, it was about a hut wider than the Falcon. When you compare that to some Earth vehicles, it was nearly four semi-trucks long, about eight high, and 11 wide. 
and the cargo capacity was equal to the weight of 12,000 African elephants, or 7,000 on the wild card. Now this ship would stay in Card's hands for decades. At one point he met Thrawn, and upon learning about the blue man's love for the Isalamiri, he figured they must be important and threw some in his life support hold. This meant that this spying, hacking, partially cloaked ship now also had some force negation powers. By 17 ABY, he flew this ship during the Battle of Almania, where it took part in destroying a victory class. And even up to the time of the Yuuzhan Vong War, Card was still using this ship. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. This ship has appeared in so many things that I just wanted to show you the list from Wikipedia. Some details on the Wikipedia page say that it was defenseless and needed to be escorted by either capital ships or starfighters, but this line wasn't cited and it seems to contradict with the hull rating from X-Wing Alliance. It being so close to the DP-20, which was purpose made as a frigate intended to see space combat, makes me reason that it couldn't have that weak of a hull and it was first named in canon via the book Star Wars The Complete Locations. But that's it for the Action 6 Transport. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon. But most important of all, remember, you never know what background ship in a movie has a rich EU history. And the Force will be with you. Always.